Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. You know, I, I had an ice bucket challenge. Praise the Lord. Eh? Ice bucket. Mm. I experienced, you know, that's what we desire to experience, Christ. I experienced cold water, praise the Lord. <laughs> As is not often the custom. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. Praise the Lord. But cold water. Cold water, praise the Lord. Government here running a Julia said, Yambi. Hallelujah. Government here to Yambi. Um, well, uh, what a privilege it is to be in the presence of the Lord, to know His word. Uh, if you've not been following us, you'll probably have a bit of trouble relating with some of the things we may say, but. Uh, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit will de definitely still deliver something to you uh, to give you life. We've been talking about rest. In the book of Joshua, we begin to see uh, the ideas that God gives for us to <clears throat> lay hold of this rest. Um, again, uh, we're always keen to emphasize <coughs> what rest is. Rest is not utopia. I praise the Lord. Rest is not utopia. No. Re rest is not that place where everything is good. I praise the Lord. We were, we, were, we were not built for that. We were built for contentions. Hallelujah. You know, even once you've... Uh, made the decision to enter his rest. You, you, you have to stay in his rest. Praise the Lord. And um, so entering his rest is hard work. Hard work, praise the Lord. Uh, youth, hard work, praise the Lord. Hard, <laughs> hard work. Uh, forget all these ideas you get about life that... Uh, you can start a YouTube channel. Welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> 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 uh, then, <laughs> then you forge experiences <laughs> to keep people interested. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. No, wait, rest is hard work. It's contention. It's contention for your destiny. Your destiny is in rest, praise the Lord. Your destiny is in rest. And, and this hard work is, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, that I pray that from his glorious and unlimited resources that he will strengthen your inner man, that you may have endurance, that he will strengthen your inner man by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, more, most often, we don't know that when we pray, that's what, uh, that's what we contact, strengthening. You, you need to be strengthened. You see, church is not for sissies, praise the Lord. You know that word? It's not for sissies. Most of church is still an emotional bunch. Ojakufa, praise the Lord. <laughs> Church is not an emotional affair. It is a spiritual affair. Praise the Lord. Jesus went into uh, Jairus' house. And they were wailing. And, and he told them, no, uh, she's only asleep. They mocked him, praise the Lord. And what, how did he respond? He didn't mock them back. He put them out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When he entered his father's house, 
he whipped them out. Praise the Lord. Church is not an emotional affair. And the greater challenge is for us to come out of the emotions and to get in the spirit. Praise the Lord. Church is, you know, you know like, let me give you an example. In politics, uh, let's say <clears throat> uh, America can decide to start up its economy and they start a war. Praise the Lord. A war starts somewhere. Why? Because defense spending is going to increase uh, and Boeing and whoever else are going to. But meanwhile, in other countries, people are dying. Hey, praise the Lord. You know that Luganda saying, Those of you go, who go out protesting, you die, praise the Lord. Wear red, go and die. Then they said, we, we will not forget you, you are heroes. Which heroes? Yeah? Which heroes? Your mother is the loser. Your wife is the loser. Your children are the loser. Uh, praise the Lord. All because you are being heroic. The Bible does not give us those ideas of heroism. Praise the Lord. And that's what we're about to, to see. But I'm trying to tell you that, see how dangerous life is. Freedoms are built on people's blood. Eh? Yes, that's how it is. So if you see them eating and driving big cars, they fought. Praise the Lord. Even you find something to fight about and eat when you are at rest. <laughs> Hallelujah. My point is, if you use your brain, you'll have, you'll have a good time in life. <laughs> Amen. You'll not be bothered by, you know, you know, you know, hallelujah. And th thank God we, we have uh, promises and, uh, in the word that give us uh, uh, a better inheritance. We have something better to look forward to. Amen. You, you may die when there are still potholes in Kampala. Praise the Lord. The only thing that does is delay your funeral. <laughs> because the funeral has, has to go through photos. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But it's, it's not about that. It's where you are going. Amen. You know that when you, when you rest, it doesn't matter whether your funeral has goes through potholes. Amen. You know you are, you are with the Lord. To be absent in the body is to be present with, it's in the Bible. <laughs> uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> and it shouldn't be preached only at funerals. <laughs> Even now, like now, like now, now, now. <laughs> Hallelujah. But um, so, spiritual things are not, it's, it's, it's hard to break through when you are emotional. In fact, when God is working with you and in you, the first thing uh, he'll help you as you get into rest is to help you to overcome the emotions. The, you see, the soul part of your being, it has all these experiences of betrayal, uh, you know, bad experiences, bakunyaga, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. But, you know, all these experiences collectively, sometimes they, they, they become an impediment for the word to work in your life. They affect how you interpret the word, you know. So, anyway, so Moses had died. And uh, <clears throat> remember, I must, uh, as, a, as we recap, as we recap, Rest is God's idea. Rest is the place where God wants you to be. And when we look at the Old Testament, rest for them was across the Jordan. Amen. It was not across the Red Sea. The Red Sea was just the beginning of the journey into the land of rest. That's why he calls the promised land also the land of rest. Amen. 
So uh, you can be saved and not be at rest. Moment of inertia. Praise <laughs> you can be saved, not be at, at rest. And so that's why we are preaching rest. Rest is not necessarily salvation. No, rest is when you have... You see, what's the difference between Jesus when the Holy Spirit has come upon him and the, his first 30 years? Praise the Lord. You see the picture. You see the picture. Rest is the place of productivity. It's a place where as a believer, you can exercise your authority. You can claim your rights. You walk in power. Amen. That's what rest is. Now, you can demonstrate power when you're not at rest. That's why I said there's a difference between demonstrating power and walking in power. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, Moses had died. And so, uh, after the death of Moses, uh, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people across the Jordan River into the land I am giving to them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set your foot, or wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you. And not, not, now notice this. Then he gives the boundaries. Because, you know, uh, in my last sermon, I mentioned that sometimes you can, you can be going through challenges and some of them you're just tolerating. You know? You're just tolerating. But you are unaware. You're waiting for God, not waiting on God. You're waiting for God to do something. And yet God is also waiting for you to do something. What a stalemate. Praise the Lord. Who loses? Yeah, you see, because God doesn't grow old. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He doesn't grow old. But for you, <clears throat> you grow, and you grow into his glorious oldness. I promise you. Um, wherever you set your foot, you will be on the land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I'll be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Praise the Lord. Those are the words you need to hear as you begin the journey of rest. What, what does that look like in the New Testament? Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we belong to Christ Jesus. What does that look like in 2 Peter? The Bible says, He has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. How? Through the knowledge of Him who has called us to glory and virtue. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, the first things you must know about this journey of faith into rest is that there are all the provisions you need. Amen. Everything you'll ever need is already available. If it is wisdom, if it is strength, if it is healing, if it is deliverance, whatever it is you need is already a Available. And then one of the things God emphasizes is his faithfulness. Because he knows this journey is going to be tumultuous and trying. And so, so he goes on to say, and this is where, this is where many believers, these are, these are some of the ideas many believers need to hear, pummeled into your, their heads every hour of the day. Be strong and courageous. Verse 6. Be strong and Courageous. For you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I saw to their ancestors that I would give to them. Be strong and... You see, I'm talking to a sick person out there and the doctor has give you no, given you no hope. 
And the Bible response is not gather a crowd to commiserate with you. Praise the Lord. Gather people of faith. Not people who talk faith. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Faithful people who walk by faith. <laughs> That's a, there's a difference. Praise the Lord. I'm talking to you out there. You have been in loops and cycles in life. You are frustrated. The Bible is not telling you to start wondering whether God will come through for you. No. Saying be strong and what? Courageous. Be strong. The New Testament version, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Notice here, he didn't, he, here he, the, the, the basis for strength is verse 8. But let's first go through verse 7. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Verse 8, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. He, de he was to derive his strength from studying. Hallelujah. He was to derive his strength from studying. Today, you also derive your strength from studying. Be strong in the Lord. You, you see, you have to know about the Lord in order to be strong in him. Amen. You can't be throwing around generic ideas. Katonda munene. Okay. 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 Yeah, munene. Do you mean he's fat? <laughs> Is he big? <laughs> what do you... <laughs> What do you mean? Praise the Lord. You, you can't be deriving things out of thin air and throwing around. Spirit life needs the word. Mountains respond to commands inspired by words. Not by emotions and will. Sometimes we mistake our will for faith. You hear people say, you hear people say, with such gusto and strength, they say, I swear, I want to be, have to be married by 26. Sure, I'm a believer. Okay, okay, okay. Pray. While you're at it, don't beat me. Praise the Lord. You are not the first sayer of such sayings. And when they are 27, they start disappearing. Because we wonder about their prophecy. Don't confuse the strength of your will with faith. Praise the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Lord, yakasobola. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And sometimes at the pulpit, and that's what we build. We build people who are self-conscious, people who are trying to be strong, people who are trying to be great for the Lord, not in the Lord. And, and sometimes we, we go all out and we're saying, I'm doing this for the Lord. I praise the Lord. You, you are doing for the Lord. First find out what he did for you. Hallelujah. Study this book of instruction continually. Amen. Meditate on it day and night. <laughs> now you know my favorite line. Anyway, I learned that from I learned that from Pastor Robert. He really likes that line. Mimonde <laughs> swimming in soup. <laughs> God has given us a formula to win. And what do we do? We devise our own formulas. Then we say, you know, in the old day, I, when I used to minister to some of the people in Gerenge, so I gave them an idea why morning is good for meditation and prayer. And 
some wisdom uh, came from a lady who said, no, the mornings are hard for me. Praise the Lord. Mm. I do it in the night. Praise the Lord. That sounds like wisdom, isn't it? Meditate on it day and night. You. <laughs> the doctor has told you one times two. You have said no. I'll do one times one in the evening. Praise the Lord. And you're wondering <laughs> why your life is on the slide. Praise the Lord. That's it says, only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Only then. Hallelujah. Then we come and preach about prosperity and success. And we don't preach on meditation and study. <laughs> Why? Because we are eager for the product. We don't like the process. We do not want to participate in the process. But well, one of the things I want to bring to you, and this is, this, is, this is what you need to know. I find many people who go ahead of themselves. They know I need to be, by now I can heal the sick. They know that. But then they go ahead. Yeah? They said, they used, they used to call it what? Uh, bombarding what? Anyway. They go ahead to execute the mandate without preparation. And they may obtain some successes, but they will also see failures. And those failures may discourage them. Praise the Lord. Those failures may be discouraging. That's what has happened to most of us. We launched out. We made attempts to exercise our authority without studying, without preparation in authority and execution. Praise the Lord. With that kind of approach, you will be heartbroken from time to time. You will be erratic in your Christian life. You will not have a sustainable walk. Praise the Lord. So, but he says, wherever you, your foot steps, that land is yours. Hallelujah. I, th I think, that's, I think that's, that's the part that still disturbs most of us. So, I want to help you to see some things. There, you, 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 you notice this. You dream. And in the dream, something comes. You want to say? You want to say? Jesus. <laughs> and you? Fail. Because you're unprepared. The Bible there is sure. The Bible would help you to see that you're unprepared. Or you have an exam in the dream. Praise the Lord. Seeing as most of you have already quit on studying. Or rather finished. <laughs> you have an exam. But then in the dream, you get to the exam and you're panicking because you're unprepared. Or you arrive when the exam is done. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They, you, wherever you hear a response, just know they dreamt. But even where there's no response, they also... <laughs> you can't be a Christian when you've not dreamt about some of these things. <laughs> Especially the one where you, you feel attacked, you want to say something, and you're not able, you feel you're, you're not able to speak. There may be the other version where you are saying, but uh, the forces are unresponsive. Others, 
you pull out a pistol, you shoot, and what comes out? Water. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes, you're using a toy pistol <laughs> in a real war. <laughs> uh, you see, God has humor, and that's how he helps us. <laughs> that's how he helps us. You're unprepared. Sometimes you bring out whatever weapon it is. And it is, it is maybe you think you've brought out a mutaimba. Then <laughs> you discover it's a what? It's plastic. <laughs> it's bouncing off the enemy. <laughs> it has no effect <laughs> on the enemy. Praise the Lord. All these dreams and many more of that kind, they are trying to help you to show you that you are unprepared to take rest. Praise the Lord. It could be your, your house, maybe your house has metallic furnishings in the windows and in the doors. But you may dream, in the dream, that your main door is wooden. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Baby, the money to go. Hey, ah, okay. What about for open gate? <laughs> and you remember in the night that, oh, I didn't lock the gate. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, there's enough profile of dreams to demonstrate to us that we are unprepared. And what do we do when we wake up? We bind. What are you binding? <laughs> if, if only you were alert, you'd bind in yourself <laughs> from, say, you spirit of unpreparedness. <laughs> you spirit of unpreparedness. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They don't, that one, eh? Uh, I, there's, I met a man on the mission field who was very excited. He started a joke. He said, have a joke. Have a joke about Satan. Have a joke. This one will make you laugh. And he said, he said so I said, ha, it better be funny. Eh? Praise the Lord. He said, no. The devil went to God to complain. And he was crying. He said, people are accusing me of even things I'm not doing. He says, people have taken over my job. He says, I want to retire. <laughs> oh, so it's, it's funny. Praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, God gives Joshua the principles for preparation. He says, study. First, he addresses his attitude. He says, be strong and courageous. And I don't know what it is that, you know, you are, you are facing in life. It may be a mountain. And when I say a mountain, a real mountain. Mine is to give you hope and say, there is a word for your situation. But it starts with the right attitude. I've often found ministering to people that the first challenge they have is the wrong attitude. They have a defeatist mentality already. You say, Pastor and Sabira, they have no sense of expectation. And it's, it's common. That, that's, why, that's, that's why some of us walk into interview rooms and we are rejected. Not because we can't, we don't demonstrate ability to perform. But just the look on our face. It is a look of resignation. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're just coasting on in life. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That will affect your tone. And that, you know, it also tones your friends. <laughs> it tones them. <laughs> you have a lean sack of friends. 
Nobody wants to hang with quitters. Nobody wants to hang with quitters. Be strong and be courageous. That's the first attitude. And that, by the way, that one is your business. Amen. Amen. That one. The Bible says, David encouraged himself in the Lord. When the rest of his party, men of war, had cried until their strength failed, <laughs> David encouraged himself in the What was he preparing for? For an answer, for direction. That is something you must mobilize for yourself. Praise the Lord. You must, you must wake up one day and, and say, mm -mm, I may not know the Bible. I may not be the greatest prayer in life. But I'm heading somewhere. I'm going to do what my system says I cannot do. I will get to where my system says I cannot get to. That is your part to do. Nobody is going to come and keep tapping you on the shoulder. You can make it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You need that strength. And it has to come. And, that's, and you see, be strong, courageous. That's your will. That is your, you mobilize your will. It's, it's, it's interesting. Sometimes I joke how people have the, all the strength to do the wrong things. But they're selective. When it's the right thing, they say, this is so But they have all the energy to do the things in the opposite direction. That is delusion. You can apply that same energy. That same energy that, that, that has made you give up on life. And some people, when they quit on life, they quit, they quit with, with strength. <laughs> They are strong in quitting. And, they, and it seems as if they need all the push. <clears throat> You've seen sometimes the kids who think uh, they must be motivated to do their homework. Uh, but it's your it's parents, it's your fault. You say, after homework, I'll give you chocolate. You create the wrong precedent. So after that, they'll be like, you want, mommy, you want me to do homework? Chocolate. <laughs> they will always need motivation to perform. Amen. Be strong. That attitude will get you somewhere. Even if, you, even if your knowledge of the scriptures is little. That go-getter's attitude. You must mobilize. I am using the word must. Because that's your part to do. In all your meditations in the day, you must wake up and say, but mm -mm. if Solo can make it, I will make it also. <laughs> 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 Not this one. There are other solos in the world. <laughs> use, use your surroundings to motivate yourself and say, if they can. No, you're not. Ah, ah, there's hope for a tree. <laughs> There's hope for me too. Amen. How did I learn that? I learned that the devil, and you see this is how it happens in the fight of faith. You find a scripture. You start saying it and nothing happens. Mm. Then what comes to your system? Exactly what they told Jairus. Don't bother the master. The girl is dead. In all your system, there are all the temptations to quit. Why? You say, I've done all I can. I've done my best. Nothing seems to come through. So I learned that how. Where before, the, before, before Pastor Robert Kanja was telling people in 77 to laugh. Amen. I learned that by the spirit. I would be in that house laughing at the devil before I see anything. 
the whole night. You, you have to start, you know how you forge it? <laughs> forge it, force it, push it. Ha, 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 you start off like that. And before you know it, you feel the real one coming. Most of us are always unable to take that step of faith. Why? We are like Thomas. We want to see before we believe. It's a real war. Sometimes you start off the journey and you say, no, as surely as the Lord liveth, this word is true. A week later, nothing. And James has an interesting language. He says, consider it. Count it. Old. Why, you see, why are you counting it? Because, <laughs> because everything contradicts <laughs> the word. So count it all joy. That's the attitude of the be, be strong and courageous. To mobilize that body of yours to get up at 3 a.m. and say mm -mm, mm -mm. enough is enough. You must mobilize that strength from within you. You see, even when we talk about the Holy Spirit waking you up, he doesn't pull you out. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> the older people would tell me, Stani Anzuksiza, the devil cannot wake you up. <laughs> the devil wants you to sleep. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The idea that the Stani Anzuksiza, why? Because you had a bad dream. No. No. God is helping you to see that if you keep eating this, those mimondi and sleeping, <laughs> that your destiny is in trouble. Every land on which you, you tread upon, it is yours. Whatever you don't take, you won't get. But <clears throat> before we go to the taking, you need the strength <laughs> to take. Spiritual things are like, it's like trying to, it's like trying to hold a ghee. Mm. They sometimes seem that slippery. You see the word, you see the reality, and the contradiction is too big. And sometimes the more you say the word, the, the more discouraged you feel. Because inwardly there will be voices ministering to you from Satan saying, you're wasting your time. What is that? Discouragement. That's why God is saying, be strong and courageous. You must mobilize your own courage. A great number of us are hoping, and you know, and that's the thing. Sometimes you hear our testimonies, and they sound simple. And you say, I meditated on this word, I spoke it, it happened. That's not how it was. That's not how it was in reality. When I first pursued healing, for one and a half years. You start praying. You pray, you know, eh, you, you, you listen to someone, you pray, you know, eh, today I'm healed. Tomorrow morning, the condition shows you that you, you ain't seen nothing. So, Koguamo Amani, we can come at Agara Chicola. We've been to Vinotacha Bicola. Why are you Vaco? Oba, you see. You, you, you feel like, am I presuming? Then you get yourself up and start the journey again. 
And it, it was a journey of many, one and a half years. Do you know how many disappointments those are? How many days are in one and a half years? That's how many disappointment of days I saw before victory. Praise the Lord. That's why I told you uh, uh, on Wednesday, many of us quit because we do not have the spiritual eyes to recognize that we are making progress. That's why I gave the example of going training for something or going like to the gym. You go and work out. Your muscles are killing you. They are aching and there's no muscle. <laughs> you look just the same. <laughs> Two weeks later. But your, your, your body is killing you. The X. Praise the Lord. But inwardly, those muscles are growing. They are being stretched and they are settling in their new positions. Hallelujah. And so, two months later, you wake up. I've, you know, sometimes I go to the gym, I see some, some lean young men and they really try. Some, after so many months and there's nothing. I feel sorry for them, praise the Lord. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I know. I feel sorry for them, but I like one thing. They don't quit. They don't quit. And many a people, you know the number one thing that brings ladies to the gym is the? Tummy. Is it the tummy? Is it it's called the tummy? Yeah. Tummy. Mm. It's what? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, let's call it stomach. Oh, stomach. <laughs> Stomach, stomach, yamunda. Praise the Lord. It's okay. The number one thing that brings ladies to the gym is the tummy. <laughs> yeah, mid body formations. <laughs> and so, and so, most times after aerobics. <laughs> Other ladies go to the mirror. Hey, master. All the water got a regenda. Then the gym instructor. Then the gym instructor says, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Why are they failing and frustrated in that war? Why? They expected to lose it in one week. After putting it on for 38 years. <laughs> 38 long years. <laughs> Eating, producing, producing, producing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Breastfeeding. <laughs> Amen. But so most times I see them and I feel sorry for them. Because some of their tummies are going nowhere. <laughs> their tummy, you see, the Bible says, this kind. <laughs> <laughs> Goeth not. This kind. It is talking about that mid body formation. <laughs> This kind goeth not but by prayer and fasting. You can't lose that tummy until you fast. Praise the Lord. Others just find your ropes and just keep <laughs> tying. But my point is this. Those who know, those who know terminate those frustrations because they'll know, mm -hmm. I will only go to the gym to maintain, not to lose. Because to lose, you'd have to work so hard. Many of us don't have that energy. You'd have to leave that gym so wiped out to, in order to lose. And, and after that, you, do, you can't go back home and eat yams, posho, and all the... And all the other cubs. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
<clears throat> you see, what, what, what am I trying to say? Everybody is looking for the easy way out. They want a few days in the gym to gain muscle. A few days in the gym to lose the, the tummy or the belly. Actually, it's the belly. Yeah, it's the belly. That's the word I was looking for. Uh -huh. But I have also seen there's a lady who has been working out for the, at very least 10 years. Whenever people come into the gym, they say, Jacobi Dangaka Wadako, the lady is 55. They think she's a what? Kawala. Why? They see, when they see her from the back, she looks like Kawala. Praise the Lord. Because that's how disciplined she, she is. She's been at it. And when she's doing her stomach crunches, it's easy for her. When she's doing her aerobics, she's enjoying it. She didn't start off like that. She mobilized courage. The first years must have been hard. With courage, she added discipline. Praise the Lord. You may have a season of, 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 of meditation and you're enjoying the word, but you may be undisciplined to, to carry on and you will cap it somewhere. There are others, and you see, why am I giving these examples? They are relatable. The others, they come when they're, when, when, when they're, when they're big, praise the Lord. Mm. Yes, big. It's a, it's a bad word. Is it a non word? Fat. Non word. Non word. They work out for two weeks and lose seven kilos. Eh? Seven They are encouraged by the progress. They wonder why after a month they've gained, they lost seven and gained three. Why? Because this body of ours, it, what does it need? If it, if, if it peaks somewhere, you have to increase the work rate to lose more. Praise the Lord. You, the average one of us, you can go to the gym, work out so much and lose in the first two weeks. But after that, you will, you will plateau. Now you need to work harder to lose more. You see how you must... It's not enough to start. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's not enough to start and see some progress. You must recognize when you've stagnated and you need to input more energy. It applies spiritually. Praise the Lord. Sometimes, and most of us, that's how we start off our journeys in faith, excited. Really excited. We see transformation. God is doing things. Then after a while, we re it feels as if God stopped doing things. It's not that he stopped. No. It's the level of our investment dipped. Or rather, we assumed that the level of energy applicable at the beginning is sustainable through. No. At a certain point, you have to increase your input. Praise the Lord. Why? Because the stakes are higher. I may have started off praying very hard so that God would do something. In the process, you come to a place where now you realize you are more dependent on prayer. Prayer is no longer for solutions. Prayer is like a breath of spirit life. And at that point, praying for an hour feels like praying for five minutes. I feel like I need more. I need more. Praise the Lord. And that's why God tells Joshua, be strong and courageous. He says, you may have the energy to start the journey, but you need the courage to carry on in the journey. Somewhere in the middle of pursuing rest, you, it's going to get too uncomfortable. It will get uncomfortable. It's inevitable. How uncomfortable does it get? 
you'll wonder to yourself, eh, you know, there was <clears throat> the, the tribe of, uh, the half tribe of Manasseh, Gad, and, and who? The ones that opted for the east of the Jordan. Well, the ones that opted for <clears throat> to take the land of the Amorites, where they had uprooted um, Og of Bashan and, and who? Sehon of, yes, but the land of the Amorites. <clears throat> they, w there was a temptation to settle too early. Praise the Lord. And so Moses told them, he said, nope, if you settle too early, uh, may it work against you from God says you must pursue the land with the rest of the tribes of Israel. And when they have settled, you may come back and possess the, the land. You, you may come and join your, because they are going to leave their children and wives and livestock behind. Praise the Lord. There is always a temptation <laughs> to settle for little. Nasabye obulumu ibwa genze ne obulwa de buchaliwo Nasabye nakuzino funa yo busente sente ne ebizibubi chaliwo Nasabye mwana ya tere de tere de muko ne acha chankalana <laughs> Praise the Lord There's a temptation to settle for so little in life And why and I find that, I find that um, um, most of us, you know, it's like in life. In life, when we've come from so far, in our language we say barugahari. You know? Baruga. When you've come from so far, it's easy to settle for so little. Why? Because it feels like it's been an odious journey. It feels like the journey has been so taxing. And, and the thought of carrying on that journey with that energy is, 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 uh, is not a, a joy maker in your system. And so people say, ah, this is enough. But God gave them the boundaries. He said all the way from Negev to Lebanon, from Euphrates to the Mediterranean. He says that is your land. It was up to them how much they took. Praise the Lord. So God has made healing available for you. God has made whatever resources you need available to you. It's up to you how much you take. There are people who say, no, give me healing. Praise the Lord. Because now after you've, you after, how can you, after, you've, after you're healed, you need, you need money, eh? You know what I mean? You need something to chop. <laughs> you can see the attitude of the prodigal son on his return. The only thing that brought him back was food. That's all that brought him back. And some of us are saying, Katona, just call it which God do you do you know which God you are talking about? The prodigal son came back for only food. He received back his full inheritance. Said in ah, in my father's house, even the servants have food to eat. Even when he came back, he came back with a, a line of repentance. I know I've sinned against you. It's okay. I'm willing to be a servant. The father didn't restore him as a servant. He restored him fully as a son. And what is God saying to us? God is saying to us, there is an inheritance that I've prepared for you. Through the word, Paul puts it this way. He says, brethren, I commend you to God and to his word of grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. I like to always just, you know, encourage people and say, look, 
You don't want to get to heaven and God shows you what you could have done. <laughs> you don't want to get to heaven and God shows you what you could have accomplished. And what will your story be? Praise the Lord. That's what you'll be telling God. You remember the story of the talents. Mm. <laughs> the story would seem to suggest that the response to those who don't grab the opportunity is unkind. Praise the Lord. You suffer in this life waiting for people to help you. You suffer in this life waiting for God to do something. Yet all the while he's saying, just be strong and courageous. Start this journey and I'll pick you up with the spirit. Praise the Lord. You can be all you've intended to be. And what I mean is that there are visions that God has given to you about what you can be. Come. And maybe everything around you is suggesting you won't make it. In fact, praise the Lord. In fact, in truth, if God gives you a vision, the first response you'll get is, you can't make it. But if you think you can make it, it's very likely your own vision or your own ambitions. God's things are too big. You know, God wants us to use our faith to stretch his grace. <laughs> I hope that makes sense to somebody. Use your faith and take all you can. You must mobilize that energy within you. It starts with be strong and courageous. You must be determined to weather the storm. On any spiritual journey, there is resistance. Jesus told them, let's go over to the other. They were with the creator. <laughs> Until the Bible says he came to the world, he created. And we knew it not. They were with the creator. And they encountered storms. What does that tell you about the journey of your life? When God says, let's cross over to the other side, you meet storms in the middle of that sea. Those are the snakes you dream about. Notice in most dreams, snakes are positioned in path. The other positioned on a path to some place, a path to some place, at the doorway. That's where you see snakes in dreams. They are meant to scare you back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to be aware of these spiritual happenings. Most of us are unaware. Some of us think, I'm a child of God. I cannot be stopped. No, there are forces arrayed against you. And those forces, are the first, the, 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 the first place they are working is in your mind. Lowering your goals, lowering your pursuits and aspirations. And then people are saying, Jagala Kalimu. Ah, Kalimu. Auntie Akalimu Kajana Kasara. Praise the Lord. Ah, Kalimu. The way I'm funa yo, ah, ka. It's the same. Look, everywhere you've been, you'll notice this. Somebody will start building, and they'll build according to the resources they have. When the house is finished, more money will show up. Then they say, e I wish I had known. Oh, I wish I had built going upstairs. E I wish I... Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. 
One word to the wise. <laughs> God wants you to look at his provisions, not what you have. From you, all he needs is courage and strength. Furnishings are from above. And so the Bible says, looking unto Jesus. When you, when, 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 when you see your situation and you are continually mindful of it, aren't it because you are very responsible? You will never have faith. But when you are aware of your situation and you look to Jesus and you see how big he is in light of your situation, you will be inspired. Some people are sick and they say, all I need is to walk. No, don't aspire to walk only. Say, I'm going to get up and wreak havoc in the devil's kingdom. Remember David's request, shall I pursue? Shall I overtake? Will I recover all? That should be the basic minimum. Pursue, overtake, and recover all. Praise the Lord. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell you today. You, if, if you look at you, you see your resources, see your equipment, see your facilities, you won't be able to see yourself going far. Praise the Lord. But if you see, and that's why God told Joshua, study this book of instruction. It was in a way saying, keep looking at me. Don't look at your resources. Praise the Lord. And so, because we can't be like people in the world. People in the world plan according to what is in their wallet. They make plans based on the resources they're expecting. They make plans based on what they know they can do. Praise the Lord. But God has built us for more. As you see, I'm not trying to motivate you. I'm... <laughs> 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 Praise the Lord. No, 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 no. I'm not a motivator. The Holy Spirit. I cancel. <laughs> Praise the Lord. No. There's a difference between inspiration and motivation. Motivation is temporary. Have you ever been to team building? They bring PK or somebody. For the next week, you feel, hey, after a week, you are back to normal. The only thing you quote PK, PK said, PK is Peter Chimbo. He said this. He said this. You don't make, because sometimes also you see PK, you're like, hey, but if you knew, if you know the things you're saying, hey, <laughs> praise the Lord. Hey. <laughs> no. Ours is inspiration. What does inspiration do? Inspiration stirs up creativity. Motivation is mental. It, is, it, it only appeals to the soul. Inspiration is spiritual. You, through the word, can be inspired to pursue more than what you think you are built for. I didn't, you see, I didn't know, so I went to the mission field. When I went to the mission field, I was minding my business. So then after Pastor Noah had left, now I was the one there. Praise the Lord. And people still needed healing and ministry. There was no time. Praise the Lord. No no time to what? <laughs> There's no time to prepare. You better be prepared. I, I started off just, praise the Lord. 
you, the, 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 you, you, you are waiting. God has given you an opportunity. You see, you're waiting for God to make you, and yet God has given you opportunities, and all those opportunities are Ebikuruma around you. All of us, these things, you see there are people, they look at the compound, they see the dirt, and they're disgusted. The others who will see, other, you see, we're all alert to different things. There are people who, after drinking, they just throw the bottle. There are others, they cannot, they cringe at the thought of dumping a bottle anywhere. We are built differently. We see different things. That will give you a good idea of what you're built for. You can tell yourself, uh, before I sign out of life, I'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Sometimes we don't want to go into the parable of stewardship. Because a jakuna fuya. We will ask questions like, what are you doing with what God has given you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes. What are you doing with what God has given you? And, and you know that evaluation may not energize you. But it's meant to inspire you. Praise the Lord. Be strong and courageous. That is your part. And thankfully in the New Testament... We have the privilege. The Bible says, he that prayeth in an unknown tongue, what does he do? Builds himself up. In the Old Testament, they didn't have that privilege. They needed to study the book of the law in order to derive strength. They needed to hear what God did to their enemies in order to keep their eyes on victory. But today, we can stir up strength from our inner man by praying in tongues. Be strong and courageous. You mobilize it. Praise the Lord. Don't settle for your situation and condition. You are, I like the way T.L. would put it, T.L. Osmond said, you are built for more. If you find out how much God trusts you, how much he believes in you, how much he loves you, and how much he has equipped you, you can get up and determine to do more. Or and determine to have more. If God would heal you of a condition, determine that when you meet people with that condition, you say, Ako kantu kange jangu. Furuma murinya. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But now, let me, as I cap up, let me help you to see why most of you have not motivated yourself <laughs> to start that pursuit. Why? Because most of you, all the healing you got was from being prayed for. If I pray for you and you're healed, you don't have the energy to heal others. You don't. You don't. But if you determine to pursue healing for yourself, because not all, not all the time you're going to get the opportunity to get somebody to pray for you. There are certain conditions where you must determine, I'm going to get this myself. After you've walked that path, now you can help others on that path. Praise the Lord. And, and that's why, you know, use your situations, use your circumstances as guinea pigs or as a test lab. Praise the Lord. I determined from of old, I, I told God, I said, I won't preach healing if I don't experience healing. I don't preach anything I've never experienced. I cannot. I have no moral authority. But as, like John, I said, the things I've handled, that which I've seen, that which I've tested, that I can relate to you. And so you can see so, sometimes why Njiriyafe is empty. Because we are in theory. Determine and walk this path. Walk with God. 
so that when you communicate to people about God, you know who you're talking about. Aren't you a lover? No, praise the Lord. No, you can talk and people will know this person has a what? An experience. Now notice this. The experiences you have by people praying for you, they are not that profitable. They are not as profitable as the ones you obtain for yourself. That's why when I'm dealing with people and jobs, I, 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 we walk the journey of faith so that they can own it. Not about it, Sarah. Pastor and Sabira. Pastor and Sabira. The review is coming. No. Praise the Lord. No, it's not like that. If you can use some exercise, be strong and use some of your energy to obtain it, you'll have strength to sustain it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, in the Bible, and, and you see, you see, I have to say this carefully. At a certain point in the journey of your faith, you need to be prayed for. Right? But for most of you, that, that time expired. <laughs> Listen to the first line. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant. You see, you want, you, you want the Lord to kill his servant so you can get up and take lead. <laughs> what does this statement mean? It means that at a certain point in your life, my prayers to you will be ineffectual. That's what Moses' death means. Praise the Lord. Hey. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua. 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 <laughs> hey. The Lord spoke to Joshua. Hey. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. <laughs> Pastor's prayers may not work anymore. Praise the Lord. I think that's difficult for the unschooled spiritually to understand. There's prayers I cannot solicit for from anointed men of God. No. Praise the Lord. There's prayers I cannot solicit for. It's too late. Now I know the source. I have to go to the source. And if it's for digging the well, I must dig the well as, until I hit the water. If that's 200 feet, we keep digging. Praise the Lord. Be strong and... That journey that you begin for yourself, that's the journey that gives you a sense of purpose in life. You know, praise the Lord. Bansabira. Praise the Lord. Ban Sabira. After a while, eh, you what do you own? Amen. What do you own? You need to own something. You say, the other day, I got up and the devil told me that uh, the season was going to be bad financially. I got up. I said, no. I prayed about it and my finances have increased. Mulota konga had in bagazibuze. Hey! Atia kaseko kaudi. Mulota nga hand in baga kozechi. Ngo manyant stani yachimye sente zo. And you're wondering, why did I put my handbag? Where did I put my wallet? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Be strong and courageous. It's a partnership. In 1 Corinthians, the Bible says, God is faithful who has called us into, into partnership with his son, Jesus Christ. It's a partnership. You have a role to play. It's not God who does everything. In fact, the, it says, whatsoever you bind on earth, it's bound in 
heaven. The initiatives come from down here. The initiatives come from down here. It starts with us. Through the spirit we receive inspiration to walk. To start that journey. Master, if it be you bid me to come. Whose idea was it? Was it Jesus' idea for Peter to walk on water? <laughs> if it be you, tell me to come. And he walked on water. You, 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 you are Peter in the boat saying, he has to say. If he doesn't say, I'm not coming. You have to celebrate some of that waywardness like Peter's. That energy. The initiative starts with you. You are strong, you are courageous, you invite the facilitations of heaven. Heaven will work with you when you're strong and courageous. Praise the Lord. But all because we look unto him. We lift up hands.